everybody. Happy Wednesday afternoon. So we're going to do um, Shields Live. So thank you for coming and joining us. Sorry that we had a few weeks off, but it was a, kind of a crazy couple, three weeks. So I needed a little time off to get reoriented again. So I knew what was going on, but I think we're back getting, I'm home. I'm back to Coralville. So those of you who know me, I've made it back to Coralville and um, got some of my stuff moved and I got a couple more things to do yet. So, hello. So we're going to talk about some computer skills today. Um, I've taught this class many times, starting with Windows XP. So this is something that I've been teaching for some time. And um, it it basic computer skills for embroiderers. So as embroiderers, you know, we have to do some stuff on the computer to get designs to our machines and then, you know, maybe get some of our stuff organized on our computers so that we can get them over to our machines and stuff. So there's a lot of other things, new softwares and stuff, but the, the basic computer skills, um, these are things that I learned by taking classes when I was getting my teaching certificate. This is the kind of things I took for classes that were just basic things that were things you do all, you know, all the time. And there, there's computer skills or like Windows skills. Um, so it's something, though, that you do need to have some of these skills and, and it's good to review this. Um, Windows has changed a little bit again. Um, the last time I did this was on Windows 10. So Windows 11 looks just a little different. So we're gonna work with Windows 11 today. So you can kind of see um, the basic things are still there. They just, they just visually look a little different, okay? So let me turn off the banner. And um, the first thing I wanted to, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things before I put the camera down, because I'm going to share my screen with you today. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to talk to you about. Um, the first thing is most of the computers now, when you buy a laptop, even a desktop now, most of them do not have um, CD-ROMs in them because you know we still have some CDs that have embroidery designs in them okay on them okay and I have a lot you know um, so this um, CD we can still put in a computer that doesn't have a CD ROM did you know that so a lot of people call me and say well I don't have a CD how do I get my designs well you just need to get one of these little external CD writers okay this was I got this at Walmart I think it was around 25 30 dollars and you can get them on Amazon, eBay, you know, just different places. But go get yourself one of these. It plugs into a USB port, okay? So you might, you'll need one of these. I, I still have software to install on my, my computer that also still needs a, a CD-ROM. So anyway, go get yourself an external CD-ROM. They're not expensive. And then the other thing I was going to talk a little bit about was the USB stick. So Shield Sewing Center um, sells USB sticks. So if you're having trouble with USBs not working in your machine. Some of them, the, the USBs are just too large. Um, these are four gigabyte sticks and those work pretty well in the machines uh, to put designs on. They're not real big. Um, if you're buying them at the store, some of the, the design or the sticks, the USB sticks are just too um, big. You know, they're 32 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte. They're just too big for the machines. So use a smaller one in the machine. These, these are four gigabytes. So if you ever need sticks, we carry these, the smaller ones that work real well, they work in the scan and cuts also. Um, so that's the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about um, is, you know, some, some of the, the sticks that you buy at the store will work. 16s usually work in most of the machines. Now, if you have the older ones, like, like an older machine, you might need a two gigabyte stick. And we still have some twos around too. Um, those for those older ones. How much are these sticks? These sticks are, I think, 1095. And the, our little shield sewing center ones. This, this time we had blue. I don't know what color he ordered some new ones. So I don't know what color they'll be this time. But these work real well in, especially if you have older machines that you're looking for USBs, you just can't have anything too big. Um, and then if you have one of the newer ones, then yes, they will work with the um, 
they will work with the um, bigger sticks that you can buy at the store. Because basically at the store, I mean, the smallest you can buy is, I mean, the smallest you can buy, I think is 16 gigabyte now. And some of the machines just won't read those. So um, anyway, so that that's what the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. So go get your go get your external. If you've got a new computer with Windows 11, you probably don't have a CD-ROM. And get yourself your little external one to plug in. And that's what I'm going to put the CD in when I get to that point here. Okay. And then um, USB sticks. So don't, so for the machines, they don't need to be huge. You know, they don't need to be the biggest stick you can buy. I never store designs on a stick. This is just for the transfer from the, the computer to the machine. Okay. So that's why I don't like the big ones. These load faster, you know, they're not as big and they load fast. And so that, that's what I would recommend. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about computer skills. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. So I have to I have to look at the, the comments on my phone. So hopefully I can see them OK because I don't have my glasses on. Um, so I'm going to have my phone laying right here so I can see the comments. So give me a second here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then I have to oops, let's see here. I have to remember how to do it. And where did it go? Stop cam. Oh, they changed the name. It says present now. Share the screen. There we go. Yeah, they changed the, the name of the little icon. Share. And I want it to be a full screen. So there's the full screen. And give me a second, then I'll come down and you'll be able to see just my screen here in a minute. So we're going to be... <clears throat> Hopefully you can see just the screen. So the second here, I'm just checking it on my phone to make sure I didn't forget to click something that I needed to. Sometimes I forget. There we go. Oh, good. Now you can see everything. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, the originally when I did the last time I did this, I was using Windows 10. So Windows 10, um, had the start menu, you know, we've talked about the start menu multiple times, but the start menu was kind of over here in the left hand side, like where uh, Windows 7 was and Windows XP. That was the traditional pace it's been. Well, they kind of move it over here to the middle now. So now it's in the center of the taskbar at the bottom. So you can kind of see the taskbar. And the start menu is the little four little squares down here. Okay. So I use this quite a bit. So I'm going to click on the start menu and open it up. Now they have changed this a little bit. Um, in Windows 10, there were a lot of large, well, they weren't large, but they were a bunch of tiles all over. And they started putting these tile things in um, during, um, during Windows 8. And I found the, the tiles very distracting because they were just like all these squares all over my screen and it was real hard to find everything. So what I like to do with Windows 10 and Windows 11, I like it to look a little bit more like Windows 7 used to look. It was a little cleaner, maybe a little easier to find things. So these little things, the little tiles, there's still little tiles here. They're not quite as distracting now. So that's what these things are that say pinned. So these are actually still those bigger tiles that used to be like in Windows 8, but they kind of like part them down a little bit. But you can actually unpin them. So if there's a bunch of stuff there that you don't need to use or you don't know what it's for, just get rid of it. You don't need it, all these things all over this. So I've taken a bunch of stuff off of mine, off my start menu. So let me show you how to unpin them because they're really easy. You just go up, you, un you right click on it and say unpin from start. How easy is that? And then it goes away. So you don't have all the stuff on there. Or like this one, I can go right click, oops, right click, unpin from start. Okay. So that's one thing that's really nice um, is you can clean up this section of your, your screen. So when you open this up, there's not so much junk on there. I like my, my stuff to be a little more clean. Okay. Now, this is also where you can then get to the rest of your programs. You know, I clicked my little start button down here. And then up here, they kind of moved this to the right and it says all apps. So if you click on that, then here's the list of all the programs on your computer. So they're in alphabetical order and you can just kind of go down. 
Yes, we we sell the the, the flash drives, Connie. Yep, I don't think they're on our website. You can call me. I just I don't have them up on the website. I don't think I do anyway. But then here's here's the all the list of all the programs on your computer. So if you need to find them, that's where they are. If I hit back up here, it takes me back to my start menu. Okay, so here's all apps. Click there. And then you can scroll down all of your different programs. All right, so this is basically the same as it was on Windows 7. It's just in a different place now. And they just they you just have a different little little icon to hit. Okay. So it makes it pretty easy. All right. Now, the one thing that I like have always liked to have when when we I went from Windows 7 to Windows 8, I really struggled because I could not ever find this PC or my computer, you know, it used to be called my computer and now it's called this PC. And that's where, you know, you can find your hard drive. That's where you can find your USB sticks, where you can find your, your, um, your, like the CD drive that I'm going to plug in here, all that. That's where you find it. And so it's so much easier. I like it to be here in my start menu. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to get it there. So to, to get to find it, if you don't have it in there, like it, it won't be in there when you open this up originally. And I took mine out because I wanted to show you how I was going to put it back. OK, so if I go down to the bottom here of my taskbar, you know, here's the start menu. It pops up the little if you hover over, it, it says start. If you go over a couple more icons on my taskbar. This is File Explorer. So this is the way that you can go, always go anywhere. If you don't want to do what I'm going to do now, you don't have to. But you can go down here and click the file folder, and then you can find stuff. That's one way to find it. So I'm going to click there. And when this opens up, on the left-hand side, there's like a little nav navigation pane. And then there's also a pane on the right. So I'm going to look at this navigation pane on the left. And I want this PC to be in that start menu that I opened up like I had it before. So if I look down on the navigation pane on the left, look, there's this PC. It's right there. So if I right click on it, one of the options it's going to give me is to pin to the start menu. Look at there. So I'm just going to pin it to my start menu. And the other thing that I've always liked having there is my documents. And now I can get to my documents here in this navigation pane in File Explorer. But I don't normally go down and open this. I often open my start menu. So I'm going to go back up here to the left on my documents right here. It says documents. I'm going to right click on that and pin that to my start. So then they're both there. So, so Windows XP, Windows 7 all had those things in the start menu. And I'm used to them being there. And so this is how you can add them back in. Okay, so let me show you. Let me close this back up again. Now if I go back down to my start menu and click on that, look, there's this PC and my documents. So now I can just click start. And I want to go to this PC so I can find my USB stick that's plugged in. Click on this PC and there it is. So here's that whole file and here's my hard drive for my computer, which is C. Here is my USB stick. I have a USB stick plugged into my computer. And then here's that little DVD writer that I just plugged in. All right, so they're all going to show up there. And you double click on those to get into whatever you want. So I thought that's pretty cool. So so it does help. I also put a few things like down here on this taskbar. Like one of the things that I like to put on the taskbar, like is my Chrome browser. So you can also right click on those items and then you can say pin to taskbar, which is cool. OK, so that that works out really well and it makes everything a little easier to find. The other thing you can do is if I go to, oops, let's go back to the file explorer, the little, the little file folder again. The other thing that works out real nice, if it's harder for you to find like the start button and stuff, you can also take like your documents or this PC and put an icon out on your desktop. So if it's easier for you to find it just on the desktop, go over here in that little file menu. I'm in the file explorer. I go down to where it says this PC, and I'm just going to 
left click on it and I'm going to pull it out and look, it makes an icon to go on my desktop. So then when I click on that, double click on that on my desktop, see, then it opens up this PC. So that's another way you can do that. You can do the same thing with documents. If I go over here to documents, left click and pull it over, create a link to desktop. Okay. So then you can have those right there on your desktop if that's easier for you. All right. So that's how you make some of those things just to make it easier to get around on your computer. I got to make sure there's no comments because my phone decided it was going to shut off here. Sorry, guys. I can't see the, the comments on. Um, I don't know why my phone shut off. Normally it doesn't when I'm in a live second here. I'm trying to get back in here. Am I, if I, am I off? Oh, there it is. It's okay. I got it. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I don't know why for some reason. Why not store designs on flash drive? Oh, why don't I start, store the designs on the flash drives? Um, because flash drives can go bad. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, and, and if you're pulling your flash drives out of your machine in the wrong time and also out of your computers at the wrong time, then you can kill your flash drives. And so if you have no other op, no other copies of these, then you're going to lose your designs. So it's real important. I just use them for transfer. I don't actually store anything on them. Everything's stored on my computer and on an external hard drive that I store stuff on. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit then about, we talked about that. Okay. So the other thing that I get a lot of um, questions about is how do I organize my files? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how, to, how I organize my files, uh, my design files. That's, that's what I get a, lots of questions about that. And um, when I organize, yeah, I use an external hard drive. I have them all on my hard drive and an external hard drive. Um, so I have backups of backups. So I would recommend put, keeping them on your computer and on a hard drive um, as a backup or vice versa. My backup is actually my computer. My regular hard drive is my, my external one is my hard drive. So um, I back that up to my computer. So either, but that, but definitely backup. You need to have at least one or two backups of everything. So, okay. So let's talk about file organization a little bit. So one of the things that I do is I like to keep all my embroidery designs in my documents. So remember, we put that we put that icon here. I put it here on my desktop, but I also can go down to my start menu and it's right here pinned my documents. OK, so then it's going to open my documents and you can see I have a whole bunch of folders in here. So you have to think of a computer as a file folder, as a filing cabinet. So like the when we filed in filing cabinets, we had a drawer and that drawer might, might have been labeled as a certain thing. And then inside that drawer were folders with different things in them, right? So this is exactly the same way. It's just electronic and not physical, okay? So think of it, that's how I think when I think about doing my, um, my, um, organizing. So I'm going to go ahead and make a folder in here in my documents. This is where I like to keep everything. I'm going to make a folder in here that is going to be my embroidery designs. So that's what I'm going to call that folder. So to make a folder, it's very easy. If you go up here to the, you can do a couple, do it a couple ways. You can right click inside my documents and go to new and folder. OK, that's a, that's one way to do it. You can also go up here to the top of the documents folder up here and see where it says new up in the top left hand corner here. New folder. OK, so there's a couple different ways to do that. And then down here in my documents, it's created this new folder down here. And you can't see it very well because it's kind of under. Let me move it over a little bit. It might not let me. I have to let me see if I can hide this thing. Um, it's hard with the little sharing thing. So anyway, there's my folder that it created. Okay. And then I can, I can name this while it's blue. If I click on it again, 
there we go. It, it's going to give me a little place where I can type in a name. So I'm going to type in my embroidery. See if I can spell today. I'm not sure. My embroidery designs. Okay. And then I'm going to hit enter. Okay. In a second here, I'm going to close this so it'll pop up so you can see what it did. They kind of go in alphabetical order. So now it'll be up a little higher so you can see it better. Okay. So my custom designs, my embroidery designs. So here it is. So what I did is that's that little sharing thing kind of gets in the way. If I hide it, then I have a hard time finding it again. <laughs> so my embroidery designs, and if I click on it, and then it once again, you click on it twice, not real close together, just click, pause, and click, then I can name it. And that's what I just did here is I named my embroidery designs, and then I hit enter on my keyboard. So this is going to be the folder where I'm going to put all my embroidery designs. Okay, and this is inside my documents, in documents. Let's see here. Then to get into this folder, so we, we this is like our file drawer. Let's pretend this is the file drawer. And then we've got, we're going to double click to open that up. And of course, that folder is now empty because we haven't put anything inside there yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to make a couple more um, folders in here. So I'm going to right click. Let's try doing it this way this time. Right click new folder. And I would like this folder to be called, um, and I, what I do then is I like to organize my folders by the name of the company. So this will be like, let's say I need a grid design. Okay. And then I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to new folder. And then I'm going to type in Kimberbell. Okay. We'll just make a couple. So Kimberbell, see if I spelled it right. Okay. So then I, when I take designs off of my CD or off a USB stick or download them, I would put them into these folders. And then inside this folder, if I double click like I need a good design, then what I do is I put the name of the embroidery design. Okay, that's what I put in side the name of the company. I put the name of the design CD. So the one I'm going to do a little bit later is called Snowman Pillow. So I'll name it Snowman Pillow and I will put the designs off of the CD into this folder. OK, so so just think of it as a filing cabinet and, and pretend you're going through the little paper folders. And I, I like to have my embroidery designs folder inside of documents. And then I like inside of that folder to be the names of the companies that I get my embroidery designs from. And then inside those, I'm going to put the name of the, that particular CD collection. That's how I do mine. So I get a lot of questions about that. That's that's how I do it. It very simple filing procedure. You know, I try to keep it, but it and and I'm not going to lie. It if you have not done this for a long time, it does take some time to get it organized. So I spent one winter some years ago <laughs> going through all of these CDs I had and like all of my design folders and I got them all labeled inside my documents. Okay. So like, and this is one that I have labeled as just embroidery designs. And this is one that I did earlier. If you look at this folder here, this is in documents. And then this one's all in here by the name of the um, embroidery design. Like this one's cozy winter wall hanging or dime month doors or the embroidery 101 or um, 2,500 designs for the luminaire. Okay. So this is the name of the, what is an external drive? Um, an external hard drive. I like the new ones. They're called, um, they're called solid state drives and they're small and they plug in with a USB and they're like an external um, hard drive, like one that's in your computer that you can back up everything to. That's actually my hard drive. So my backup is to my computer, but they're a little external device that is like a hard drive that's in your computer, but it's just a, a separate piece that sets next to your computer. 
So that's what that is, Nancy. Okay. All right. So you can see this is my other folder in here. That's called just design embroidery designs. That's why I chose my embroidery designs because I already had a folder like this. But you can see like here's one that says home and garden. Here's one that says graceful flowers. So if I open up that folder, then here's the designs in there. OK, and the other thing I wanted to show you, if you have one of those little icon type um, embroidery design, embroidery programs like I have perfect, um, perfect stitch viewer from Dime on here. Right now, all I see is like little icons in here. But if I go up to the top and I go to view and I go to large icons, then I see a picture of the actual design. So a lot of people ask me, how do you see the pictures of your designs? And it's super, super easy. So do you simply drag and drop? I Okay, Nan Nancy, we're going to talk about that. I actually never drag and drop because I don't always get a clean copy. So I'm going to show you how to copy and paste, and that's actually a better way to do it. But you can do it with drag and drop as well. I don't, I don't drag and drop because I don't always get good copies that way. Okay. So I'll show you that here in a minute. We're going to do that in a little bit here. Okay. So then we talked a little bit about this PC. So this is my organization. I go to documents. And if you look up in this little line up here, Okay, so there's documents. I'm inside of embroidery designs and inside graceful flowers. So it tells you where you're at. Okay, and if you need to go up a level, if you click up a level, now I'm just in embroidery designs. If I click up another level, I'm just in documents. Okay, so you can find, you know where you are by looking in this little, it's sort of like a little, um, it, the, the line here gives you the, 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 um, the roadmap of where you're at. Okay. So this, this is very important to look up here and then you know where you are. Now, a lot of people um, use downloads and when you're downloading things from the internet, we're going to talk, we're going to download something in a minute. I don't care. I don't ever have anything in downloads. It's very rare. There might be a couple things in here, but I don't leave anything in downloads. I like to put it in the folder where I want it. So I'll show you how to navigate here in a minute too. OK, so that's my that's my organization. I like to organize in documents. I like to make a folder that says embroidery designs. And inside there, I put the names of the company. And then inside of those folders, I put the names of the CDs that I have or or, or the downloads, whichever it was. OK, so let's talk a little bit about this PC. We talked about documents and doing a little bit of um, organizing. But now let's go look at this PC. So if I click on the start menu and I go to this PC, everybody's is going to look a little different. It depends on what you have plugged into your computer, what's going to show up down here under devices and drives. Like this is C drive, which is your computer hard drive, the one that's driving your computer. And then I have a USB stick plugged into mine. So mine's USB drive D. So I have a USB. And then I also have that um, little reader writer, um, the little CD writer plugged in, and that is letter E. OK, so yours may look different than mine, but this is how you access those items. You go to this PC and then I can go in and like I want to go in and look what's on my stick. I can double click on that and then it opens up that folder. If you look at the top, this PC, USB drive D. So you know where you're at. I can go back to this PC. And then if I want to open up my you, my um, CD drive, I would then double click on this. There's nothing in it right now. So I don't need to do that right now. But everything's going to show up here. So if you have several USB sticks plugged in and maybe, um, you know, your writer or maybe a camera, everything's going to kind of show up in here, depending on what you have plugged in or maybe a printer is plugged into your computer. So stuff like that will show up here so you know um, what you have connected to your computer. OK, so that's a little bit about this PC. So that's how we're going to access those um, those uh, USB sticks. Okay. So we need to get designs on them. Okay. So let's talk about putting a, a design from a CD 
to a USB stick. Okay, so I'm going to close this up. And I'm just going to take um, that, CD, that CD that I showed you at the very beginning. It's called Snowman Pillow. And I'm just going to take the CD out of the jacket. I'm going to open up my little external drive that I have sitting next to me now. And I'm going to put the CD in here. Okay. And a lot of computers have what they call autoplay. So when it when it thinks for a minute, it might pop the window open right for you. If it, now see mine did. So you now you're probably seeing my, this window popped up on my screen. If it doesn't do that, like if you have the autoplay turned off, this is where you would find it. Okay, we'll go back to start. Okay, and then I put my little, this PC over there and then this is in the DVD drive. This is a DVD drive instead of CD and it's snowman pillow. Okay. So then I can double click on that and it would open up what's on the CD. So that's how you access, access it if it doesn't come up automatically. Mine's set up to come up automatically. So mine did. Okay. So I would like to copy um, the designs to my USB stick. Okay. Now there's other stuff on here usually. And if I look in here, like it's one of these says design files and I'm gonna look in here to see what is on this CD. There's some Christmas cards. I want the snowman pillow. So let's just get the snowman pillow. And so I'm just double clicking on the, the folder that I want. And as you can see on this CD, there's a whole bunch of different uh, formats. Now, honestly, I don't need all the formats on my USB stick. I just need the one that works on my sewing machine. How do you set up autoplay? Um, you know, let me see. I Normally what happens, it's automatically on um, unless you've told it to turn off. And um, like Windows 11 just did a couple of updates and it came up. There'll be a little notification that sticks out um, from the right hand side of your computer and it'll say, what do you want to do? And I like it to open to the files. So, um, but you know what? I'm not sure. I've never had to set it up manually. So let's just see. Let's go to this PC and see if we can figure it out. This PC, that was a good question. Okay. Format, let's see, show more options. Let's show more options and see if it gives us any options for autoplay. Oh, open autoplay. So yeah, so if you just right click on your item that you have, like your USB stick and go to show more options and then it says open autoplay, then it will let you choose. So like I do that, see it says USB drive D. I want it to open folder to view the files. Okay, that's what I want it to do. So every time I put a USB stick in there now, that's what it'll do. And you can do the same thing with my, my DVD drive. So I can right click on it, show more options and open autoplay. Okay. And then I can tell it, I want it to open the folder to view the files. So that way it'll always do that. When I, when I put the, the US, when I put a CD in. Okay. So hopefully that helped that question. All right, so let's go into the design files again. I think I just want the snowman pillow and I'm just gonna copy one folder to my stick because I want this one that says brother baby lock PES. That's the one that my machine takes as a brother, brother machine. So I'm just gonna right click on this folder instead of, and yes, you can drag and drop. So I could just take this and I could pull this over and I could drop it down on, to my USB stick. But I, I've had problems with things not copying quite correctly that way. So I usually go to the folder I want, I right click, and then I go to, to copy, which is right here. It looks like two little pieces of paper. That's kind of the universal copy symbol. I'm gonna click on that, okay? And then I'm gonna go find my USB stick. Well, that's also in this PC. And it's right here. Let's open it up so you can see it. And there's my USB stick, right? So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to paste. It looks like the little clipboard and paste. So it's going to put the designs from the CD 
over onto my USB stick. So I cop, I right clicked and copied on my CD and I right click and pasted on my USB stick. Okay, and there's that folder. So if I open it up, let's go to view again. I have that little program on my, my computer. So let's go to view, large icons, and we can see pictures. And this is this little pillow I did as a class a long time ago. It's so cute. It has this little snowman and has these little side panels on it. Yes, it will be on YouTube. I'll put it up on YouTube later. Yep. Okay. So there I copied and I pasted to my USB stick. Okay. You would do the same thing if you were wanting to go, let's say, from a folder. Let's do that. Let's say I want to go to my documents and I want some designs out of my documents in my folder. So let's see, I want a needed good design. And let's say I also want the 50 states. So I'm going to right click on 50 states and I'm going to copy that. This is the shortcut, so you don't have to close things. If you look on the left navigation pane, look, there's my USB way down at the bottom. So if I right click on that, on the left hand side, right click, I can also paste. Paste is right here. Okay, it looks like a piece of paper in a, in a clipboard. So I'm going to paste it. And it's going to go from my documents to my USB stick. Now this might take a minute because this was a big file. <laughs> I forgot that was a big file, so it was close to the top, so I used that one. So it might take a minute. We'll let it go while it's going. So it'll show you here the 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 um, where where it is, the status of it. So okay, and then you can also just do like one design. So I'm just going to stop this so it won't stay so long. But let's say I just want one design out of African Safari on my stick. So I can open up that. I can open up my brother baby lock designs. And let's say um, I'm going to change to view large icons. So if you don't have that little program, that little perfect um, stitch viewer, it's not really expensive. And then you can see the pictures. It's so nice. And let's say I just want this one design with the giraffes. So I can click, right click on that one design, copy it. And go down to the left where it says USB drive D. And I can right click and I can paste it. So then it'll just put that one design on my stick. So you can do folders. You can do one design at a time. Um, there's a really cool little shortcut of, um, let's go back to our documents again. So see, I can navigate right here. I'm going back up and looking at documents. I can go in there and then the other thing you can do is like, let's say, let's go back to African Safari again. Okay. Let's say that I want all oh, the first 10 designs. So if I click on the first one and I hold my shift key down on my keyboard and then go click on say the eighth or 10th one, let's go through the zebras. It'll, it'll uh, actually copy every, or it'll select everything in between the first and the last thing. Well, isn't that cool? Then you can get a bunch of stuff. Okay. And then I can just right click and I can copy those items. I can navigate down again to my USB stick. It's on the left. Just go down to where it says USB drive D, right click on it and paste. And it'll put the designs. I had, a, I had one of those already on there, so it was okay. All right. So now let's look, go look at the, the, the USB drive. So if I click down on that, then that's what's going to show up on my screen. So here's all those designs we just put on. Isn't that cool? And then here's the 50 states folder part of it got on there. Okay. And then here's that other folder that I put on. And this was the one that was called Snowman Pillow. Now, I would like that to be called Snowman Pillow so I know what it is instead of just Brother Baby Lock. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click again turn it blue and I'm just going to type in snowman pillow. Okay. The other way to do that is if you can't get the clicking right, you can always right click and it should give you the option of renaming. So let's see, where did they put it on? Windows 11 is different. So let me show different options. Let's see. Yeah, right here. You have to show more options. It says rename. So if you go down 
and right click on the folder you want to rename and just say rename, then it'll give you that and you can type it in. Okay. So these are all little things that I just took little classes while I was getting my teacher certificate back. And this is the kind of stuff we learned. It was so, you know, copying, pasting, learning how to get around in Windows. And so like on the left is this little navigation pane when I open up my folders and I can find stuff over here. Okay. All right. So let me turn my page here. I'm just kind of going through some of my notes here. Let's see. So we did files to a USB from a, to a USB from the CD. Oh, all right. So now we need to put this USB stick right in our in our computer or in our machine, I should say. And this is if you do nothing else, this is very very important. This is how your USB sticks go bad. Okay, so a lot of people at this point they got their stuff on their stick. They think so. Let's go back to US to start in this PC and check to see our USB stick. Here's our USB stick and we're gonna look and there's all of our stuff we wanted on there. Okay, so you got it on there. Well, then a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just grab that stick and they pull it right out of their computer. Well, it's sort of like turning on the toaster and I'm pulling the plug and then you get sparks, okay? So, so it's not off, it's like that USB stick is on. And I don't like to, you know, like pull the plug when things are on. Okay. So we need to, we need to eject the memory stick before we put it in our machine. And this is important. So that to eject a memory stick, you're going to go down to the taskbar and it may not be showing down here. All right. There's a little arrow usually pointing upward somewhere along this area. And you can click on that. It says show hidden icons. I'm going to click on that and then see this little icon right here that looks like a memory stick. It says safely remove hardware and eject media. So it's very important that you eject the USB stick before you put it in the machine, because if you keep pulling it in and out of the computer, you're going to ruin your USBs on your computer or the sticks or both. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click that little icon. And it's going to tell me to eject my USB flash memory. Now, I don't want to eject the snowman. I, that one's okay. It can stay in there. So I'm going to do the USB flash memory. I'm going to click that. And then it says safe to remove hardware. So once you've done that, now it is turned off so I can remove this from my computer safely. Okay. So it's very important that you do that every time you use a stick. Where do you find it? The eject button, Jan, is going to be, if it's not showing on your taskbar down here, there's usually a little arrow um, around the taskbar towards the right-hand side. That's going to be um, show hidden icons. And then you click on the arrow, and then there'll be more icons in here. And that's usually where my safely, safely remove hardware button is, the eject button is. Okay, and it's this little, it looks like a little USB stick, like that. And see, now the only thing that's available to eject is my US, my little CD button, okay? So so there's usually a little arrow somewhere. It's, a, it's usually around towards the right-hand side of your taskbar down there, okay? But it is very important to do that. Don't just pull your USB sticks out. Now, when you put them in your machine, if you can't see the button that allows you to access your USB sticks, because it looks like a USB icon, if you can't see that, don't pull your stick out of your machine either, because the, the machine is thinking using that USB stick. Okay, so don't, don't pull your USB sticks out unless you can see the icon that you access it with. So then you know it's not on. So that that's the other thing that's important is don't just pull your USB sticks in and out of your machine because people come in all the time and say, well, my USB stick's dead. Well, it's probably because it's not being ejected from the computer or you're pulling it out of your machine when it's it's on. So don't pull them out when they're on. 
I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. I have a US, I have a couple of USB sticks that are over 20 years old and they work just like they did the first day, but I've always been very, very careful to eject them. Okay. So that's something that my geek, geek friends caught, taught me when I was teaching <laughs> to make sure that was very important. Okay. All right. So the other thing that we use a lot, and this was a hard one for me to decide how to do. Um, the other thing we use a lot is um, we download things from the internet. Okay. So I'm just going to show you downloading from one of the, every, every website's different, but a lot of them are like the Kimberbell website. Okay. So I'm just going to log into my Kimberbell account online. So let me, let me go down to my browser, which is down here. And I'm going to, whoops, second here. I got to get up to the browser and then add another. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to go to Kimberbell.com. This is something we, as embroiderers now, have to do a lot. We have to, we have to do a lot of downloading and stuff. Okay. And I'm just going to log into my account here. Hopefully I remember the password. And... I'll show you where my downloads are. So then when, so I'm, and, and the other thing I'd tell you is I use Google Chrome as a browser. Um, there are other browsers out there, but I've always had the best luck with everything working properly with window, with, with Google Chrome. Um, I'm not a big fan of edge. Um, and then I know there's a couple of other ones out there, but some things don't work with some of the browsers. So Chrome has been always my most reliable one. So that I use Google Chrome for a browser. Okay. Um, so I'm in my account here on Kimberbell and this one has, you know, all these little areas where I can go. And in one of the places is downloads. So only this, this, um, on their website, they only have downloads. They don't have CDs you can buy on there. Everything's downloadable. Okay. So it's going to go look for my downloads here. And these are all items that I have purchased, you know, like design files and like quilting designs and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's say I have the Kimberbell Winter Volume 1. It's up here at the top. So we'll just do that one. And I want to download it. Okay, so if I click over here on the download button, okay, um, I'm going to show you one more thing real quick on Google Chrome. Um, this is why a lot of people end up with everything that they own in their downloads folder. On Google Chrome, I can set up that I want my browser to ask me where I want my stuff so that it doesn't all go to my downloads folder because most computers are set up like, like um, defaulting to going to your downloads folder and I don't want anything in there, okay? So what I like to do is I like to set up my browser and my browser has some settings up here on the right hand side. There's these three little polka dots. Okay. If I click on that and I go down to settings, I can go in to, um, and I have to remember where it's at because they change things, downloads. So there's a little icon over here that says downloads now. And I have the default location is downloads. So it shows that my default location is downloads and you can change that if you want. I just leave the default as that, but I use this little slider thing here. It says, ask where to save each file before downloading. I want the browser to say, where do you want this? So that it doesn't all go to that downloads folder. So I just turn that little slider on and cause it, cause it is normally off like that. And so I just turn it on. And then every time I click on something to download it, it comes up and asks, where do you want it? Okay. So that I find that very useful. Okay. So we got that turned on and now let's hit the download button right here. So I'm going to hit download and it's going to pop up my little window. So then it asks me, where do I want to, I want to put this. So now I can navigate to where I want this design. Okay, so let's say I want this design to go in, remember that um, that documents in my documents and then we made my embroidery designs. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna navigate to that over here. So I know that it's in documents. If I scroll up a little bit over here, 
I can find documents over here. So I can click there and then here's all the folders and then we're looking for my embroidery design. So it's under M. So I can tell it exactly where I want this. So my embroidery designs, okay. And this was a Kimberbell. So I'm gonna go to Kimberbell, my Kimberbell folder, okay. Double click on that one. And now it's gonna go in that folder right as I'm downloading out of, out of my account. Okay, so I'm gonna click save. And it just downloaded it right to that folder where I've told it to put it and it's ready to be, okay. Um, Jan, if the icon's not there, then it's probably because you don't have anything plugged in to eject. So if the icon's not there, that means nothing's plugged into your computer to be ejected. So try plugging a USB stick in and then try it again. Okay, so that's how I download, okay? Okay, that, that way everything is where I want it and I don't have to move it out of the, try to find it in the downloads and then sometimes you have so many things in there, it's like I can't find it, okay? So I just told it where I wanted it. So set up your browser so that it will ask you where do you want to put this, all right? Okay, so I'm just going to log out of my account here. But now we have another problem that we have to know how to do. And this is very common when we're doing, when we down stuff, download stuff off of the internet. So I'm going to go back to the start menu. Remember, we're, we're going to documents. And then I went to my embroidery designs. Got to find it. There it is. Double clicked on it. And we went to Kimberbell because that's where we put that. Okay. There's that design folder that I downloaded that winter. It's called a, a, a Kimberbell Winter Volume 1. Okay. Well, um, guess what? That is a compressed zipped folder. All right. Now, our embroidery machines do not, um, do not read those types of folders. And so we need to get it extracted before our machine can read it. So what I'm going to do, and you can kind of see in the picture, let me make it a little bit large. I'm going to go to view large icons so you can see it. See, it has a zipper across it. So the ones that have the zippers on them, those are not the ones we want because those won't work in our machine. Okay. So we have to extract it. It's very simple. Windows, you don't need a special program. If there's a special program they keep telling you you need, you don't need it. Windows does it automatically. Okay. I'm going to right click on that folder, right click, and I'm going to go down to where it says in the menu here, extract all. Okay. So I'm going to click on extract all, and this little box is going to come up. Normally what happens then, and remember, we put this in documents, my embroidery designs, and then in the Kimberbell folder. It's going to extract in the same place that the zip file is. Well, that's where I wanted it, right? So I'm just going to hit extract at the bottom here. And I'm, it's going to open. It's going to take a second. It's going to open up. And it's going to open up the folder that it's in, which is fine. We can close that. Now, if you look in my folder where we were earlier, look, here's the zipper folder. And here's a plain folder. The plain folder are the ones that we need because the other ones are, we don't need, okay? We don't need that zipper folder again. So I'm going to select it and I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to hit delete. I do not need to keep zipper folders. So anytime you have a zipper folder, just get rid of it, you don't need it. You can always download it again later, but I always get rid of the zip folders because then I don't get them mixed up, okay? So here's our, folder that we have. Let's see here. Um, there's another folder inside that has all these things in it. So they have a tendency to do that, that they'll be like folders inside of folders, which I find kind of annoying. So I'm going to open up this folder that has just the three folders I want. And I'm going to select all of those. If I click on the first one and hit control, I can click on the next one and then on the next one. Or I could have selected the first one, hit my shift key and clicked on the last one and everything in between would be selected. I'm just going to hit copy. 
I'm just doing some file maintenance. This is some of the stuff I do. So I don't like all these folders inside of folders. So I want my designs to be right here. So I'm just going to click paste here. This is the folder that, that they're in. And then this was the one that we just opened to get them. I'm just going to select that folder now and get rid of that. I just hit delete. It may, it may not delete it for me. So Windows has this thing that it does that if it thinks that something is open, it won't let you ex it won't let you delete things. So let me see if it'll let me do it now. Sometimes it will. But I would like this folder to be gone. So I may have to do it later. Sometimes you have to restart your computer, but I just want these three folders in here. These are the embroidery files. Okay. And and the other thing I do when I get in here, I don't want all of these formats. I don't need all of these. I need PES. So what I do is I use my control key and the letter A. So it selects all of the designs in there. And then I put my control key down again and I click on the PES because that's the only one I want. And then I hit delete on my keyboard. And it will get rid of all the other folders. The only one that's left in there is PES. That's the only one I want. Okay, then I can go back a folder by clicking the arrow arrow and here's the instructions. So I want the instructions in there. And then the last folder is going to be the SVG files like for cutting. And I want that folder. And as soon as the Windows will allow me to, I will get rid of this folder here. Let's see if it'll let me do it now. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Nope, it still won't let me take, get, get rid of it. Windows is weird. It, it's got this little quirk in it that I can sometimes get it to work, but it just won't always let me. So I'm inside of that folder again. Oh, it might let me do it this time. Let's see. I'm just going to click on each one of these separate. See if it'll let me delete. Windows has got this thing. <laughs> and it started in Windows 10. Yeah, it won't let me get rid of that one. So sometimes if you go all the way into the actual folder that has every individual thing in it, then I can go in and I can delete them all separately. Why it won't let me delete them together? I have no idea. It's a Windows thing. I'm just deleting all these. This, is, this was that extra copy that I had that I don't want. So I'm just going through and deleting these. I'm clicking on the one I want and hitting delete on my keyboard. Okay. Oh, now it might let me do it. Let's see here. Let's see if it'll let me delete them now. Ooh, look at there. It did finally. Let's see. So it might let me do that whole folder now. I'm just going back and forth on, with the folders here. Let's see if it, ooh, there it goes. I finally got rid of it. <laughs> yep. So if you open up the folder that you want to delete and go to the individual items inside and delete each one separately, then sometimes you can go back and delete the whole thing. It's, it's just a Windows thing. So now that folder here in Kimberbell is my winter, Kimberbell winter, um, winter volume one, and it may or may not let me change the name. So let's see if it'll let me change the name. Kimberbell winter volume one. I like to name them what they are. See, if, nope, it's not going to let me. So sometimes the other thing it does is it won't let me rename them until I restart my computer. It's stupid. I haven't figured, figured out why it does it. It's just a windows thing. So it's going to sit here and look at me for a minute and then it will tell me that I can't do it. So then I can, after I restart my computer, I can go back and I'll, I'll rename it. So, cause I, I have it named the way I want. Um, windows is like I said, windows is weird. And so they have a couple of things that, that um, it started in windows. Yeah. Windows it started in windows 10 is where this started. And I don't know why they've never fixed it. It's still the same. So, um, so sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends on what you're doing. So you can see this is still sitting here in limbo. It won't, it won't do anything. It'll come up in a minute and tell me I can't do it. Okay. So, um, I had some notes down here. So these are just some helpful hints. 
If you do file maintenance as you download, like I just did with this, I did it when I downloaded this item, it will make it very easy to keep your files organized and easy to find. So I do this as I go. You know, like when I started doing this, it took me a very long time. It's still sitting here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the, we, it, we just have to, you know, we just have to bear bear with Windows here. See, now it comes up. See, it says that, that it's in use. So I'll just cancel it and I'll, cha I'll change the name later. Okay. After I restart the computer, it'll let me do it. Um, you can rename the files that you download to be more descriptive. That's what I was trying to do, but Windows was me being mad and wouldn't let me. The other thing I like to do while I'm working with this, I'm just going to close this folder right now. I like to, after I do a bunch of like, you know, changing and moving things around and stuff, I like to go to my recycle bin, right click on it and empty my recycle bin. So there's 50 items in there to empty. So keep your recycle bin emptied because then your computer will stay running a little better. If you have a bunch of junk sitting around, it's better to kind of do it as you go. So as I've been working with my, you know, I, I remember when I started doing this um, years ago, I had this huge, huge thing full of CDs. I mean, like two of them were full of CDs and they were like downloads and different things. And I'd made all these CDs and I had hundreds, probably 200 of them to do. And I had to get them on my computer. So it was a huge task. I worked on like all winter, one winter. But now it's so easy because as I get something, I download it, I save it to my hard drive and my computer, and I label it and put it in the folder where it belongs. And then everything's right there. So it makes it very, very easy. Okay. So I know it might be some work to start with. Work That's a good winter project to start doing your filing. And um, that's that was one of the hugest things that people ask about is how I file. All right. So, but just think of your computer as a, an electronic filing cabinet. I kind of ma imagine my files in my old filing cabinet, the paper files, and you go through and everything's labeled and it's the same way here. Okay. All right. So we have extracted, we've copied and pasted. We've done some filing. We've talked about copying, um, ejecting. So, are there any other questions about some of these basic computer skills? Did this help a little bit? Did it make, did it, did it help a little bit with getting around in windows? Sometimes it's very daunting if you're not sure where you're going with things. And I'm sorry that last part was a little confusing, but my, but my computer, sometimes it just gets funky. <laughs> it, it, uh, and it's always been like that since windows, I think it was started in windows 10. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and hey, Tim, are you ready? I'm ready for what? Are you going to come back and talk to everybody? We're about yeah, done. Okay. Tim's going to come and talk to you. He has some news for you. So I'll get out of the way and let me stop sharing my screen. And then Tim's going to come talk to you. So he's second here, Tim. I'm going to stop sharing and then bring up the camera. Woohoo. Oh, I will, Nancy. Yep. I'll let Tim talk and then I'll I'll explain again how to, to eject the flash drive. Yep. Hey everybody. Sorry I missed you earlier. I'm kind of busy, you know, you but oh I can, I guess. Um again, thanks for joining us. It's been uh, been a couple weeks, but uh we're finally getting back to normal. Um the holiday season's here. Just want to give you a reminder, you know, this is always a time when uh, we start to use our machines more. Um, try to get them in if you need to get them serviced. It's always better to get them in before something goes wrong than after. Um, we are about a week out, so it's not too bad, but, you know, that we do get busy this time of year. Also, uh, I, I think Jan maybe touched on it, but uh, Brother has their gift guide out. Uh, we will put a link to it probably tomorrow because it starts tomorrow, but they got a lot of great deals going on, some freebies, all that good stuff. Uh, rebates. Cool yeah, a lot of good stuff. So that's going on. Um, and then, you know, we're going to start, uh, we're going to have some sales on some cabinets coming up. Uh, we're going to bring in the arrow cabinets and chairs. So we will do uh, probably one of these lives. We're going to actually, I'm going to take over and we're going to do some, uh, show you some different things of the new cabinets that are coming in. Um, gosh, what else? It's been so long. Um, yeah. Uh, got 
got some use machines still, but uh, again, just uh, appreciate you guys sharing and, and getting the name out there. We've been extremely busy, which is great. That's always good news. And uh, it's glad to be back. So have a great week, uh, weekend. Enjoy the weather. It's pretty nice out there yet. And, uh, and Nancy needs me to show her how to eject again. Nancy, again, you're going to do that. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Thanks. See Thanks, you later. Tim. Now the phone's ringing again. I know the, the phone's ringing again. Okay, so let me just share my screen here again in a second. Okay. So to eject the stick, in a second here. All right, so I got to put one in. So I'm going to put my stick in to the computer again. Okay. And mine has the autoplay, so it just opens up. Okay, so it's opened up on my on my screen. Okay, now I want to go ahead and close that before I try to eject it. So if it's open, it may not let you eject it. Okay, so make sure you close any of the folders. In this case, it'd be the folder for the USB stick before you try to eject it. And then the little ejection, oh no, from the machine. I don't have a camera to do that today, Nancy. But let me show you again on the computer here. Show the hidden icons. I'm looking um, at this little arrow and then there's my little sa safely remove the hardware. I don't have a camera that I can show you on today. Um, I don't have the second camera turned on. So I'll do that um, in the next, when I use the machine next week, I'll show you how to, to make sure from the machine. The, the trick is you need to, you need to be able to see the USB icon on your screen in order to take the USB stick out of the machine. So like when you have gotten your design off, if you can see the button you press to get to your USB stick, it's safe to take it off, okay? So that's what the deal, and I'll show you that next week when we're using the machine. I just don't have the other camera hooked up so you can see, because I don't have a machine back here today, okay? All right, so are there any other questions? So yes, I'll put this up on on, uh, on YouTube also, so you can see this. Um, you can see this um, video again, and it'll be on our Facebook page, okay? All right, so thank you everybody, and I will be seeing you next week. I don't know what we're gonna do next week. I haven't decided yet. I'm not sure when the arrow cabinets are coming in, so I'll ask Tim when we'll be doing that because I know we wanted to do that. I'm going to do some stuff with the new Luminaire upgrade. And let's see, what else? I want to do something with the, the new Luminaire upgrade. And also, um, there's a couple of other things that I was thinking of too. So we'll see. I'll ask Tim when the new cabinets are coming in. So, all right. So thanks, everybody. Have a good day. And we'll be seeing you next week. Bye.